Welcome uh, to the international conference of uh, our project, of our Grundvik Learning Partnership, Tezaurus. Uh, I am very glad to uh, introduce you our uh, scientific uh, secretary, Mr. Marius Vakarevu. Uh, he is a professor at uh, the uh, University of Bucharest, CNSPA. Uh, we will uh, tell you exactly what it means. Uh, it's, a, it's a very important uh, institution uh, uh, of high level in uh, Romania. And uh, he will uh, supervise. Uh, he will supervise our uh, activity from today. We will also uh, be here with uh, our associated uh, associated partners and uh, with our project partners, uh, which are uh, involved uh, since the beginning of the project. Uh, about uh, Tesaurus. Tesaurus. Uh, this. Uh, a Grundvik Learning Partnership uh, that uh, I created uh, this year was a prolongation, uh, well, a continuation of, uh, of our latest uh, and successful uh, Grundvik Learning Partnership, uh, NALPAI. Uh, in NALPAI we provided uh, free language courses for adults and uh, we created a uh, new uh, learning platform for adult education that we uh, used in uh, nine uh, different uh, institutions, uh, European institutions, in uh, eight uh, European countries uh, with big success. And uh, we were even nominated by the Romanian uh, uh, national agency, Lifelong Learning, among the best uh, practices uh, of this year uh, between uh, the Grundvik Learning uh, Partnerships. We are very proud to be included uh, in a brochure of, uh, of this uh, agency. And uh, that's why we initiated uh, this uh, second Grundvik Learning Partnership that we coordinate, uh, Tezaurus. In Tezaurus, uh, we want to create uh, also language courses for adults, but we intend to, to introduce uh, our native, our um, uh, mother tongue, our native languages uh, as uh, languages to learn by our partners. And we also uh, want to create uh, modules of practicing. Uh, but uh, what we want to practice exactly is uh, uh, the tradition, uh, the tradition, uh, the traditions of uh, our countries. But uh, you, if you uh, as uh, um, learning modules, uh, we will uh, have for this project reunion uh, during our journey to Piatra journey which uh, uh, begin uh, tomorrow. We will have uh, such practicum, uh, such workshops uh, organized uh, jointly with uh, our partner from uh, Pietra Lanx, uh, the new association uh, Magister uh, Educationis. For today, uh, we will uh, we will uh, have uh, more persons uh, who. Uh, we'll speak here. Among our partners, among our um, associate, associated partners, and uh, we also uh, invited uh, uh, here uh, two folkloric groups from Vastui uh, from and uh, from Kush. Uh, and uh, they will try to show you exactly what a folk dance from uh, Romania means. And maybe you will succeed to recreate some uh, uh, dancing steps uh, because uh, we will also have here our choreographer, a specialist in uh, folklore from, uh, from the city of Kush. Uh, we want to, to thank uh, to our um, associated partners from Vastui uh, County because 
Uh, we created uh, in um, every partner uh, should create uh, such a consortium, but uh, in fact we, we created a, a consortium for uh, applying for introducing the project to the community. And this uh, consortium is made of uh, uh, the following institutions. Cejerea uh, Evastui, it's uh, the hosting institution, uh, the institution which hosts this uh, conference. <coughs> we will also want to, to thank to the museum uh, Stefan Celmare from Vastoi and uh, they uh, received that as uh, yesterday uh, in a very, very pleasant manner and uh, we um, visited together with our partners uh, the ethnographic uh, section and uh, uh, the ancient history sections and it was uh, a very, very nice um, um, experience for all of us, a cultural experience. We also uh, want to, to thank uh, to Centro Județean pentru Conservarea și Promovarea Culturii Tradiționale. It's uh, uh, a special institution in Vastui Department uh, whose mission is to, uh, to preserve the folkloric, the folkloric treasure and uh, they uh, helped us with these groups of uh, uh, dancers and singers. Uh, we also uh, will have here Cece de Vastui. It's a center for didactic resources for the teachers and for the teaching staff uh, of Vastui uh, department. Uh, we will also have here the departmental libra library Nicolae Milescu Spataru and uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Liliana, Miss Liliana Moga will, uh, will uh, present uh, us uh, a special uh, communication from, from this institution that we also visited uh, yesterday. And uh, we also uh, wait for the representative of Vastui Prefecture, of School Inspectorate Vastui, and uh, among us there are teachers from the theoretical high school, uh, Mihail Pogamichanu, uh, the high school that uh, uh, received us here. Uh, concerning this uh, project, uh, I want to uh, present you shortly uh, some, uh, some ideas uh, about uh, its implementation. Tezaurus, uh, 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 whose no longer name is the Treasury for Adult Education, is a Grundvik Learning Partnership, implemented, uh, which will be implemented during 2013-2015 which has as main objective to promote intercultural adult, European adult education on the basis of language learning and new technologies. Uh, the main products of Thesaurus Grundig Learning Partnership will be firstly, the methodology of teaching traditions as occupational prophylactic therapies for adults in English and national language versions. Secondly, the practical course supports for adults uh, valorizing, valorizing traditions which uh, uh, com will contain demonstrations, multimedia presentations and linguistic, uh, linguistic component. Every course will be taught in English of A2, B1 and B2 levels and national language as foreign language, uh, as, uh, presented as a foreign language of uh, A1, A2 levels. We will also create in this uh, project an original open source software containing the course uh, supports, a second open source software, a thesaurus with vocabulary 
used in projects courses, a special website, and uh, I uh, I can present it with, uh, to you. Uh, it's uh, this is our uh, website, and uh, we have also uh, launched the first uh, version of the LMS of the project. Uh, the LMS of the project is a learning management uh, system of, the, of our project. It, it's a, a, an adult-friendly platform. platform. Uh, we have um, the previous uh, experience of uh, teaching uh, foreign languages with the help uh, multimedia platform. We used uh, NetPy uh, three versions of platform uh, for two years, and uh, we now uh, we, uh, we, uh, we used this experience to create this new platform. Uh, and you you can see uh, it has uh, bigger letters, uh, and uh, we will. Uh, we will discover together that uh, uh, it contains a more friendly environment, a learning, e learning uh, environment. Uh, we will also uh, create uh, during our project a documentary movie with many episodes about uh, the the realization of the project. Uh, an online uh, TV series with uh, episodes describing every new skill <laughs> learned in the project. And uh, every institution will edit uh, its own blog, uh, like a kind of, um, let's say, uh, diary. Like a kind of diary, and uh, we will integrate uh, these blogs to to the project main uh, website. Uh, the project products are realized in uh, conjoint activities, supervised by the coordinator, and uh, we will also have uh, some international seminars. This is an international conference, but uh, during uh, the next uh, meetings. We will organize international seminars, practical courses, and international workshops uh, during, or practicum, like we said, uh, during project meetings. And uh, we will also have, uh, through the web conferencing uh, system of our project, two web, uh, two, 12 uh, web conferences during uh, 12 different months and uh, during these web conferences uh, we will uh, provide the training courses for the coordinators. Uh, this is the presentation of our project. We already started it. Uh, we uh, signed the contracts with our national agencies in uh, August, September. Uh, the later one was uh, uh, the, in, in the Greece because of the events uh, from Greece. Uh, they, they just signed the, uh, the contract with their national agency and happily they, they are here with us. And I have now the pleasure to, to, present, uh, to present to you the structure of the partnership and uh, also the partners will uh, present their institutions and their uh, scientific communication today. So, we have here uh, with us uh, Elena Roxana Irina, uh, the representative from uh, Associatia Magister Educationis, uh, the Association Magister Educationis, Piata uh, Nancy Romania, the second uh, uh, Romanian institution in this project. And, uh, <laughs> let's interact a little. <laughs> um, we are so scared, but uh, we don't have to be <laughs> like this. And uh, she is uh, here uh, uh, with uh, a part of uh, her big team, 
and she will present you uh, when time will come uh, she will present you uh, her colleagues here it's a new but very brave uh, association of teachers and uh, you will have uh, the opportunity to, to discover uh, the complexity of their activities uh, in the Athenians tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Uh, we also uh, have the pleasure to, to welcome here for the first time the, representative, uh, the representatives of uh, the Patras uh, University from Greece. They are very young and uh, they, uh, uh, they are very, I don't know, happy to be here. I, uh, I think they, they like what, uh, what they saw yesterday and uh, probably what uh, they will see today. Uh, so they are uh, Vasiliki Natuna uh, and uh, uh, Manolis Vienas. They, uh, they belong to a structure of the University of Patras. More exactly, it's a laboratory for graphics, multimedia, and GIS. It's a secret service, I don't know. <laughs> uh, something very uh, obscure. Um, we also have uh, here with us uh, the, uh, the representatives of uh, the Computer Society from uh, Cyprus, uh, and more exactly, their institution is ECDL Cyprus. Uh, so, Antonio Santonio, the coordinator, the project coordinator, and uh, uh, Zina Pai Bonomu, um, his colleague. Uh, we are proud to, to welcome here. Our uh, traditional, I can say, uh, our traditional partners, because next year uh, we will uh, we can uh, organize uh, festivity because we will have ten years of collaboration uh, uh, with the school of Via uh, Longa uh, Lisboa. Lisboa. Uh, our dear partners in so many projects and look in this new one too and uh, they are here with their uh, principal uh, Mr. Nunu Santos and uh, with uh, Ilda Karinas uh, which is a new coordinator and uh, with uh, part of their team Uh, we collaborated uh, in the last uh, project for the first time with this institution and uh, uh, we, uh, we discovered that uh, we, we can do great things together. So uh, we continued in this new project. Uh, our dear partners from Zagreb uh, is a craft, craftsman association from uh, Zagreb, our uh, partner. They are also here with us. Thank you. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, uh, the, the partners from uh, Castamonu, from the school directorate uh, Castamonu, uh, and uh, they proje their project uh, coordinator, uh, Ilke, Mr. Ilker Arichoglu. They are uh, we also uh, have here our colleagues uh, from uh, my colleagues, I can say, but our colleagues because uh, they belong to the coordinating institution uh, from the Cultural Association uh, Europea, and uh, they will uh, uh, present us some. Uh, some works, some of their works, and uh, uh, I can now say one time again thank you to the Department of the Museum from last week and uh, yes, uh, uh, 
we are here, uh, they are represented here by their uh, director, Ramon Avocado. And you met her yesterday, and she prepared you for today some uh, beautiful surprises. And uh, when the time will come, you will, uh, you will see you. Uh, and uh, look, uh, our partners from uh, Casa Popoli Didactic Vasco are here. Um, and uh, I want to thank them uh, for the beautiful collaboration we had in the last two years with Nalpaya project and now with this uh, new project. Jika um, Ursanu is here. And uh, also uh, Monkakova. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, for now my mission is um, quite over and uh, I can invite uh, uh, the chief of our uh, association, Cultural Association Europea, to, to say a few words. It will be a short speech, I promise. We hope so. <laughs> Dear participants in the international meeting of our project, you have just arrived in a beautiful and hospitable country, the heart of what historians call the Carpathian Danubian Pontic area. Indeed, the Carpathian Mountains, the Danube River, and the Black Sea have always been the geographical marks around which the Romanian people was formed and developed along thousands and thousands of years. In ancient times, the north of the Danube was considered a terrestrial paradise due to the wealth of the territory. <coughs> Sorry. The, due to the wealth of the territory. Rich soil and subsoil, various crops, vast pastures and forests, all forms of reliefs, and an incredible natural hydrographic system. This has been a blessing, but also a permanent temptation for enemies. Despite the hardships, like a unique miracle of history, the inhabitants of the place could not be dislocated from their forefathers' homeland. Since times out of mind, the territory of this country was inhabited by the first creators of a sedentary culture in Europe, and evidence can be seen all over the place. Vestiges of our extremely old civilization and history are discovered time and time again. Huge cities buried underground, refined artifacts, slates with a strange writing older than the Sumerian one, monuments, megaliths, the most famous being perhaps the Romanian Sphinx in the Bucet Mountains. For thousands of years, these people have expressed their creative genius in folk garb and costumes, songs, ballads, fairy tales, arts, customs, and traditions. All these are a priceless national treasure handed down from generation to generation and a challenge for our sense of responsibility. By this project, you are invited to discover this treasure and maybe understand a little of our ancient, profound spirit. Welcome to Romania. I introduce you one more time, Mr. Marius Vakarelli, Dr. Marius Vakarelli, our scientific secretary. Good morning, everyone. I hope you listen to me. Uh, I have a presentation. I'm from the. <coughs> okay, um, if you see, I'm from the National School of Political and Administrative Studies in Bucharest. In fact, it's the highest highest school of political and uh, administrative studies in Romania. It's a university created after a French famous level, um, uh, famous model, Ecole Nationale Administration, if you know. And uh, we try in our university to be 
at the same level, maybe or maybe higher, only with a few people or maybe all of us. Uh, my text, if you see, is who regulates society, justice, law, or traditions, because we want or we don't want, in fact, society must be regulated. We cannot act without regulations. Yeah, if we, if we try to act without uh, some without rules, without uh, without regulations, uh, it will be a completely anarchy, and after anarchy, it will be all, always the, the jungle law. In fact, the power of um, of uh, stick, if we can express it this way. First part, of course, trying to explain what is society. It's a group of people, in fact, which are uni united. If they are not united, they are not society. They are, it means they are groups of people. And if we try to analyze and if we try to develop, to understand the society, the contemporary society, we can see that Internet creates much more individual people, but it destructs also the societies. Because almost everyone can find a lot of things on Internet, and somehow he is isolated, she is isolated, in, in fact, in his own world, which is represented only by the computer. Yeah? There is a, uh, that great separation between people who have normal relations with people and people who have only virtual relations. And in this case, it's very, it's very complicated. A real society means a group of people or institutions, but always united. Without, without unity is not a society. In fact, it's a group of people. Also, society must be structured, and the structure appears only when state or state institutions recognize it. A state is recognized by other states. Just remember, we had since uh, 2007, we have a new state officially, officially, or more or not officially, a new state in Europe, Kosovo. My country, Romania, don't recognize it, and other countries too. Okay, there are other countries who recognize it. You cannot be and you cannot function without a real recognition from other states. Because without recognition, it means um, um, the measures against you. In the same time, if you try to create an association or something, if you try to have much, much, much more structure, you need law. You need straight control. State actions to recognize you. Try to create an association. <coughs> And in Romania, you must go to the judge, judges. All, also, society is a place for negotiations. Society is not only a regulation and very strict and very, uh, and very uh, enforced. Because if it's not negotiations, in fact, we have dicta uh, dictators. Negotiations. In the last years, in the last two years, a lot of protests was in our countries. In Romania, especially since September. I was going there every time. Gezi Park is famous, yeah, in Turkey not always. Protests in Greece, always famous. Everything means negotiations. If the society is created by politicians, which are very strong, separated by the people, we don't have a society. We have a complex, uh, a complex uh, fight between people and ideas. And sometimes on the elections we can have strong, strong, strong problems. And I'm not talking about series or other things. I'm talking about generally ideas. <coughs> Social institutions. Society is society. It's true, it's society, but it's also... We must understand there are some social institutions. Family is the strongest social institution. Church is more or less a social institution. Property, it's a social institution. Okay, it's true, it's in law. Family, it's in family law. Property, it's on the civil law. But all of them represent something. Represent something for society. Represent something for everyone. Everyone uh, analyze his position according to family, according to property, according to other things. <coughs> Social institutions are developed first by habits and traditions. Because first of all it was habits and traditions. As we talk, first thousands of years ago it was not a real state. <coughs> yeah, it was not Ministry of Finance. 
it was not Ministry of Education, no. First of all, it was small groups. And among them, it was only the blood. In fact, it was the um, blood connection. After that, only after that, we start to... And, you know, there are some traditions who regulate our lives every day. Because, for example, we, we want or we don't want state need only one thing for every people, for example, to know when he is born, what he can do in his life, and which is the way and where he will be on the own funeral. But a lot of traditions, every country have a lot of traditions for, for newborn people, a lot of traditions when you die, but all of them are only habits, habits and habits. They are not regulated by law, but they are inside a society. And try to, in a normal society, to don't respect this kind of traditions. Sometimes sanctions are much stronger than human, human law sanctions. Social institutions and writing. Okay, we can try about talk, we can try to talk about social institutions, we can try to express everything. But first of all, we must understand that there are habits and there are written ideas. Written ideas means to, act, to collect some habits and to make a selection among them. If you make these selections from that, we analyze and we describe law, we describe justice, we describe all the administrative procedures, social institutions, writing and law, law and justice. You cannot understand justice without reading procedures. We are not in the, in the Latratores times, you know, in the Roman Empire, yeah? Advocates, lawyers, was named first Latratores, the people, yeah, uh, who, uh, who talk too much, in fact, it was a real expression, and uh, who talk for someone. Social institution and writing procedures. All the time, if we try to talk about institutions, social traditions, we must understand about these writing procedures. Because now, every day we say, what I can read, what should I read, and what other people, especially state and state institutions, force us to read. Because we have this strange uh, and the complex... Um, uh, relations with these traditions. Society is always regulated in two ways. Visible, by law. All the time, for example, you come here, I can hear, yeah? And I use tickets. Tickets from train, tickets for flight. This is law, because it's transport law. There are some habits on transport law, but also they are visible law. But also there is invisible, different force of law and traditions. Also, we must note and we must remember that there are moments when, and centuries, and tra when traditions was very strong. In fact, you see, if state is not very well administrated, if the administrative capacity of a state is small, people are much more afraid by the traditions, than by law. Because a weak administrative capacity means that state is not able to implement and fulfill his task and his ideas. But traditions in this way they are much more and much more stronger. You cannot we cannot imagine a society without a real balance of regulations. Okay, this kind of balance of this balance of regulations it means law and traditions. Normally it's stronger to have laws, and traditions are not so strong. But when the state is low, when it's weak, in that moment, the balance is different, and traditions are much more stronger. The consequences are much stronger because, you know, law follows you, but not so much. There is freedom of will, freedom of wishes, it's true. But traditions follow you every moment, from the beginning of your life to the last day of your life. Law creates always a state justice. If we try to, and if we describe, and we create a law, something like this, we must create in the second time a justice. It means 
In the moment when normal society adopts and accepts reading and, uh, and uh, reading laws, in that moment he accepts to create a real system of justice. From the beginning to the higher, uh, higher court, which, who is always in the capital cities. Traditions create always a moral justice also. Because, you know, try to don't be very polite with your parents. And in that moment, all, society, all, all the people will not accept you in the same way. Because it's something much more complex. It's the same blood connections. No moral, no moral thing. Okay, there are no traditions. No law and no society. Because if you don't have a real moral, it means you don't respect nothing. If you don't respect nothing, you don't respect even the law. And when you don't respect the law, it means anarchy, it means the lack of society and of state. In this way, I can say thank you for your attention in so many languages. And if you think, participants, uh, as uh, you can see. Good morning. Thank you, Alex, for sitting down here and for a great organization. Uh, the, our first presentation is about uh, our institution. Uh, our, our laboratory is multimedia graphics and GIS laboratory uh, at the Department uh, of Computer Engineering and Informatics at the University of Patras. GIS stands for Geographical Informatics Systems. Sometimes we take it for, for granted that uh, everybody knows our science, so we talk about that. The University of Patras was founded in the city of Patras in uh, 1964. Here there is some pictures of our university. Uh, our university is located in Patras. Patras is the, here is a map of uh, Greece. Athens is the capital of Greece. And Patras is the third, third uh, largest city in Greece. Uh, its creation uh, contributed to the decent, uh, decentralization of academic education in Greece and uh, our university campus is located 12 kilometers uh, of the city of Patras and uh, covering a flat area of uh, 4,500 uh, acres. Uh, this is the department, Computer Engineering and Informatics Department. Uh, our department uh, at the University Campus and was founded in 1980. Uh, our department uh, developing skills for students to assimilate new technological development in computing, uh, contract basic and applied research, and design and develop IT products and services. Uh, our laboratory. Geographic Multimedia and GIS uh, Laboratory, MMLAB, was established in 1994, 1994. Uh, conducts educational and research work, uh, and uh, this is the link if you would like to find more information. Uh, we have uh, uh, primary activities, so our laboratory includes the following. Uh, we have uh, four uh, primary activities. The first one is uh, to support undergraduate uh, uh, students in this area of our science, data structures, uh, internet and technologies, etc. Uh, the second uh, most important objective is to support postgraduate uh, students 
in this field of power science. Our third uh, most important objective is to make uh, theoretical research uh, conducting in, in these areas. And uh, the fourth objective of our uh, laboratory is to develop uh, uh, the development of uh, graphics, multimedia, GIS, artificial intelligence, medical informatics and web application tools within the framework of either national or European Union research projects. Here is some, uh, in this slide you can see some statistics about uh, our human resources. MSM Lab is, our laboratory is under the direction of Mr. Uh, and Professor Athanasius Sakalidis. And uh, we have uh, four teachers, uh, 21 external collaborators, and uh, 17 PhD candidates, me, I, and Vasiliki, we are two of them, and uh, 33 master candidates. Uh, MM Lab, our laboratory, was led and participating in several research development projects uh, over the years and uh, has implemented uh, from uh, 1994 more than uh, 70. A European or national projects. In, in the last four years, the budget of our project was about 1 million euros. Uh, we uh, have very close collaboration with local stakeholders like uh, local municipalities, uh, Western Greece uh, Region Authority, etc. There, in this slide, you can see our research areas, computer science, internet <coughs> and web, multimedia, bioinformatics, and uh, GIS systems. And uh, in this the last slide, you can see some indicative projects we uh, participate in the last few years. Uh, the first one is about uh, Olympic Game, uh, a system. Uh, a pilot project of collaboration, application, development uh, for, the uh, for the organization commit uh, for Olympic Games in 2004 in Athens. And the second one is uh, about the development of uh, building and monitor system for the telepassport uh, company, telepassport Cyprus also, which is a telecommunication, a leader in the telecommunication field in Greece and Cyprus. Uh, as the, the third one is about the digital exhibition of the history of the Olympic Games and uh, this, uh, the sec our second presentation is about this project, uh, this will follow, and some other indicative uh, projects. Uh, this is our first presentation about our institution, uh, there you can see uh, our contact information. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, if you, uh, through our email, you can find more information, our telephone and email address, yes, anytime. And of course, uh, this information is also present on the website of our uh, project. Uh, there were uh, every partner presented uh, this okay. Okay. If you don't have any questions, I will follow with our second presentation. Okay. Uh, so all of uh, these two uh, Greek partners, I can say, because uh, it's Cyprus, Greek, and uh, Greeks from Greece, uh, are to, uh, to realize, together with the coordinator, uh, the electronic, the multimedia products of, uh, of the project. So, it's a very important. Mm -hmm. uh, our second uh, presentation is about Amila, uh, one of our indicated projects. And uh, in this project, we built an, uh, an electronic frame from promoting ancient Greek civilization <laughs> through mobile devices. And uh, we apply this electronic frame we built uh, for the for an Olympic the Olympic Games Museum <coughs> in Olympia. In a few words, uh, 
Our uh, electronic frame is an efficient solution for multimedia and content management and presentation for museum visitors via PDA, personal uh, And by devices. the way, maybe you will do computer collaboration with the Department of Museum from us. We, yes. They are very interested in the uh, multimedia section, a new section of, uh, of their uh, um, institution. And they are presented here uh, to their uh, director. And so, uh, of course, maybe later we can uh, done, uh, speak more uh, of course. on this. Uh, uh, this frame, electronic frame, we built it in, su in a such way in order to be dynamic and in order to be easy to apply in every museum. So, uh, if you want later, we will discuss more about this if you have any questions. Uh, it's a novel fully automatic mobile assistant with indoor position of services and uh, I will explain uh, in a few slides more about this. Uh, this framework assists visitors and provides full automatic multimedia or audio guidance during exhibition uh, visits using Wi-Fi based indoor and outdoor positioning and uh, we apply uh, as all of I already told you about, uh, uh, we applied this framework in this uh, museum, Digital Exhibition of History for Living Games in Antiquity, uh, which is located in ancient Olympia in Greece. Uh, it's a museum about uh, the history of uh, Olympic Games. Uh, here is a, a small uh, walkthrough uh, how uh, the procedure is working. Uh, first of all, the visitor receives uh, essentially, uh, essentially a portable device, properly customized. Here you can see some images uh, for such a device. And uh, the first step in the, in the PDA is to select the preferred language. The second step is to choose among different types of tools, such as short content tool, or a fully detailed tour, uh, it depends on how long you want to stay inside the museum. Uh, the second step is to, uh, uh, um, uh, after that, if uh, you already select the language and type of tour, uh, the automatic, uh, the automatic personalization, personalized assistant has a novel system for identifying the position, location uh, of you inside the, the museum. So, if I am in this uh, room, in this hall of uh, the museum, and the PTA will tell me information about this room. When I walk to the next room, automatic, uh, through the position system, explain me and told me the tour for the second hall. The visitor has wandered uh, on the premise of the museum freely, wearing the mobile device, and the headphones, and depending on the visitor current position, the equivalent audiovisual multimedia data is presented to him. Each user can receive information, moreover, each user can receive information, uh, messages from the museum information desk. Uh, our motivation was uh, these four reasons, is uh, why we built uh, this electronic framework. Uh, information and communication technologies uh, used in appropriate, if it used in appropriate ways in a museum or an exhibition can result in, in a functional upgrade of visitors' experience. Uh, the second reason is uh, the visit of the museum. Uh, we would like to make it to be uh, pleasurable and uh, we build an, uh, this electronic framework to in such way to be dynamic in order to be applied in every museum, to it to be applied in every museum, and this is an easy procedure. And uh, this, uh, the last reason is to we would like to gamification this procedure, this learning process, in order to be such a game for the small student who is visiting this museum. Uh, as I walk through this presentation, in the right section you can see some screenshots and uh, how uh, this is the screen of the PDA of every visitor can uh, Some objectives or our proposed solution is uh, of a uh, provision
supervision of uh, system portable systems that is on the navigation setting in GM. Uh, we have uh, management and reporting. We have uh, infrastructure for the management of the presentation of the multimedia content. And I will sh show in the next slides. Uh, it's an automatic personalized tool. Uh, we have four languages and different ways of tool. Auto, manually. Uh, auto is uh, using the positioning system. And manually, you can choose manually who it's a tool you have if you want to learn more about. Uh, also, we have uh, more things like interactive map in order to be easy to locate where uh, you are inside the museum, in case that the museum is big enough. Uh, logging, reporting, uh, I will explain to you. This is the whole system architecture. I don't uh, go into specifics, but uh, one point that I would like to tell you to tell you about is that uh, this subsystem, the data management system, the, the museum employee has the opportunity in order that the museum uh, has a new section uh, to go to a web application, uh, a website and submit all the <laughs> images, all the text, all the audiovisual guide that's for the new section of the museum. And there is an automatic procedure that take all these uh, images, text, uh, videos, all, all the guide material and uh, go to the PDA in, a, in an automatic way. So it is easy uh, for a museum to expand and have a, a new exhibit. Uh, and uh, the last slide, uh, I have uh, some screenshots. Uh, here you can see uh, the way the, our mobile subsystem uh, and visitor locate that uh, now I am on the sports uh, hall. Here is the, the auto visual guide. Uh, here is the chat functionality. In case that uh, a school visits a museum, you can chat with uh, our teacher or with each other. Uh, here is the monitor subsystem. The museum employee uh, can watch how many people is inside in every hall. And here is some stat statistics, analytics uh, that the museum employee, after uh, some days, can um, maybe uh, there is some meaningful patterns inside these statistics. Uh, here you can see uh, a graph about visitors uh, average du duration of their museum location. In this screenshot uh, you, can, uh, you can see that the most visited uh, hall inside the museum is uh, the second hall uh, in this museum and this is actual data. Uh, the more people stay in this room, maybe for some reason. Uh, in the next screenshot, you can see visitors count per day time uh, about uh, 5 in the afternoon is the most, uh, the, the peak of the visitor. Oh. Top, yes. uh, so here, you can see, uh, here you can see some data about the, the most visitors selected as uh, their preferred language, the Greek language. And uh, for the last, I have a video demonstration. It's about one minute. Uh, I'm not sure for the codec for the video, but it's no problem if you have any questions. I have explained this link to the video you have there. Yes, in this folder maybe, there is this video. Yes, maybe the link because I have the most yes. uh, power for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you this can see. <coughs> Okay, this is the actual museum. Uh, I'm a visitor, I'm taking a PDA with me, and uh, as I walk through the museum, the, the position system uh, locates where I am, and uh, it's like you have an, uh, white, a human guide with you. Uh, 
So we will fire all the human guards in the museum <laughs> and we will keep all the electronic <laughs> devices. <laughs> So you must it's, it's, a, it's a way to save the budget. <laughs> the pity is that the English, the, they spend uh, such a money to build this system and after that they, they don't spend the money to have a person to, to, to dispose the PTAs to the visitor. <coughs> anyway, that's all for, for me. If you have any questions, Okay, Vasiliki will continue with uh, our third presentation. We'll, uh, it's about uh, okay. It's about uh, how we can uh, use open source in order to have a learning activities. Okay, thank you. My name is Vasiliki Gaduna and I'm here on behalf of uh, the Graphics Multimedia. There is like uh, for Eurovision. Okay. <laughs> and the uh, GIS uh, Laboratory. Um, I'm going to make a presentation uh, about the paradigm of uh, how we can uh, customize and adapt open source solutions for adult uh, education specifically. Here's an overview of uh, the presentation. Um, we'll discuss um, the advantages of um, e-learning uh, in the process of adult education. And uh, more specifically, we will um, see a particular two open source uh, solutions, um, named the Big Blue Button and uh, Movie. Is it possible to, to refer only to Big Blue Okay. Because Moodle, we eliminated from uh, okay, okay. already uh, from, uh, from our uh, okay. vision, let's say, about the project. Okay. Um, here we can see um, the advantages of uh, uh, e-learning uh, for um, other education. Um, the main uh, focus, uh, the main uh, advantage is that um, with uh, e-learning systems, uh, we can have uh, continuing and uh, online uh, education. And um, uh, it's very important in the case of uh, adult education, uh, uh, which um, concerns people that uh, cannot have the opportunity to attend a traditional uh, 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 learning course. Uh, so with e-learning systems, students can, can um, uh, have access to information and uh, study anywhere um, as long as they have an uh, internet connection. Um, in addition to this, um, uh, e-learning systems provide a self-paced, um, uh, can provide self-paced learning modules, uh, allowing this way students to work at their, uh, at their own pace, uh, and um, this way they can have a, a personalized access to uh, to the information. Um, which uh, are important to them. Um, these kind of systems foster uh, more interaction among students and uh, educators, and educators, educators than in uh, large uh, lecture courses where uh, possibly um, a student uh, um, cannot have um, an instant interaction uh, with, um, uh, with, a student, with a teacher. <coughs> Um, uh, E-learning systems can provide different learning styles and um, uh, this way facilitate the learning through a variety of activities um, such as um, uh, quizzes um, or um, forums uh, for the students to discuss uh, uh, matters about the, uh, their courses and of course it uh, reduces travel time and uh, travel costs. As I mentioned before, uh, we will focus um, on two uh, uh, tools, Moodle. Uh, I will make it uh, <laughs> and a big, a big blue button. Um, actually, about uh, Moodle, I was going to um, to show you an integration 
of uh, the Moodle system that uh, we have uh, through Big, uh, Big Blue Button. Um, but I'll show you in the next slide. Uh, Moodle is an open source course management system that uh, can assist educators to create effective online learning sites. Um, but it's very, uh, it's very complicated for the adults for our target group. Uh, because we, we have uh, in our project all kinds of adults. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the social, they have our, uh, for example, and uh, they, they hardly can use a computer.